Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to edit a little bit this picture that I'm displaying on my web page. I want to crop it, but I'd also like it to display in black and white, but then change the color on hover. So first order of business is this image is in my images subfolder, and there it is. It's my commuter.jpg. I'm going to right click on this image. And let's see, I will open it with Earth and View, which is a free, simple image editor that I usually use for quick uh, for quick changes. And it's pretty easy to crop in this uh, program, as it is in most programs, I guess. But I'm going to go ahead and draw a box around the main part of the image that I want to keep with the cyclist. I want to get some of that uh, train tread on there, or train track. And then I know it's Control-Y on this one just to... Uh, crop to my selected area. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do a file, save as, and let's see, I want to save this in my images subfolder, and I'll give it a slightly different file name. There we go. So I'll just put a little two on there. It's saving as a JPEG. That's fine. With a minimal compression, click save. Perfect. So now you'll see that I've got two images saved in that images folder. Cool. All right, which means I should easily be able to go to my code, and there's my HTML right there. And instead of displaying my commuter.jpg, I'll display my commuter2.jpg, and we can see I've got that smaller image. And I'm going to go ahead and take out this width attribute, and that'll display the image at its natural width. So we can see, okay, great, so I've got that picture. Now to change it to black and white, I'm actually going to use a little bit of CSS here. And uh, I think I'll give this a class. Class equals, there we go. I'll just call it BW for black and white. And then I can reference it pretty easily. So img.bw. I really don't need the img part of that, but um, I just wanted to make it clear that that's an image tag. So image.bw. I'm going to use the filter property and then grayscale, the grayscale function. So with the grayscale function, if I don't do anything, by the way, let's see if it changes. Yep, sure enough, you can see this image is now black and white. Remember that backpack was bright yellow. Well, in the parentheses of the grayscale function, I can put it something like 100%, but that's going to be completely grayscale. Now, if I change this out to 0%, we can see I'm back in full color. So just by going in between 0% and 100%, we can change out the level of black and whiteness, or grayscale, really. So therefore, if I did something like 50%, I'm midway. The colors are much more muted. They're getting towards black and white, but not quite. So if I did something like 10%, it should be pretty much full color. If I did 90%, it should be almost completely black and white. Let's refresh. There we go. Yeah, it's hard for me to even notice a difference there. So now when I hover over this image, I simply want to change that filter effect. So I'll do image.bw colon hover, and I'll change the filter for grayscale, but this time I'll go to 0%. So now when I hover over this image, you'll see it starts off with black and white or grayscale, and then hover over it, changes into color. There you go, that's all it takes. Now, and I could apply this pretty easily to multiple images, just making sure all of my images had that same class, and then of course they would all follow that particular rule using my um, CSS filter property. Thanks for hanging out with me.